good afternoon to all the students and the participate the participants in this leadership summit first my compliments to the team at bml munjal university for setting up this most timely conversation about leadership any time that things change significantly any time that you have a crisis is a time when people look at leaders to lead to lead out of uncertainty to lead and show the way as to where the future is and we do know that the current situation has shaken up the foundation of what was considered normal i heard the term i just joined towards the tail end of the earlier session and i heard the term new normal and and a few other terms being used which have of course become commonplace and rightfully so because the question we are asking ourselves is not just that what is it that works today but what is it that is going to be our normal in the future how long will this uncertainty continue and post this uncertainty what is it that we can see as things which will be the norm as things that we must learn and also things that we must unlearn because clearly some things are there where human habit will spring right back in two or three years time we will start to go and see movies in theaters we will go and see games in a stadium but clearly there are many which will become permanent for the future and build a new foundation for the future that will be ours as we move forward in time therefore the role of leaders is critical at this time the interesting question i asked i heard chetan ask in the, at the end, end of last session was what is leadership what is unique about leadership and i think that becomes relevant to us in a time like today because we have seen that while people were locked in at home people were not all sitting idle they were working through use of technology and communication they figured out a way to talk to their friends their loved ones their colleagues at work and otherwise and many companies figured out a way to do business on the same platform but it is also clear that this state cannot be a permanent state now no one quite knows how long it will be before we have a system that can address the pandemic when i'm saying a system because you need three or four different things to fall into place you either need the the virus itself to weaken and burn itself out or you need a massive uh, immunity in the community take place or you need the ability of a vaccine to get developed which works which is effective which can be distributed and can be deployed to the entire population of the planet we must remember that no exercise of this nature has ever been undertaken on this planet it's it's easy to say we will have the vaccine ready in a month or three months or six months but please remember as on date we do not even have the containers to put enough of vials uh, for the vaccine to be made available to the entire planet so it is a massive exercise in innovation in enterprise and in social community work all put together which will require a big initiative from governments across the planet healthcare professionals across the planet and civil society working alongside them to make this a successful initiative to transition us from what is the current state which has become the often called new normal to the normal that will be post the pandemic settling down and being behind us we must also remember that at this moment the economic activity if we just look at industry is broadly falling into three categories one is the woes which have benefited current from the current situation so things like tele or telecom communication 
the uh, things like healthcare initiatives and a whole host of them, uh, things like supply of essentials, all of these have benefited from the current situation that we were in. At the same time, there are many which have currently taken a beating, but will turn right around once we come out of this pandemic. And the third are those which will suffer permanently, some without even realizing why, but it will happen to many because they will not be part of our life going forward, or they'll become a much lesser important part of our lives as we move forward. So the things that we need to focus on right now is how do we change our skilling system? Not only providing new skills, but also how we provide them to be more effective in a shorter interface with the user. How do we create a new paradigm of healthcare, both preventive and also predictive? So therefore public health will become something more important than it has ever been in countries like ours. The government has already, already announced, when they announced a new education policy, they spoke about taking the budget up to 6% for spend on education. We will need to do something similar for healthcare as well, because it is, it is clear from our experience of the last few months that it is essential to have people in good health for any nation, the nation's economy, and the country to be successful health of its people is, is an absolutely essential ingredient. That's a prerequisite. The downside of that is if they're not healthy, the cost of keeping them in good health is tremendous. And we've seen this from, from the more advanced uh, economies and countries. Uh, if you look at the budget and the spend that takes place on healthcare in countries like US and Canada and Northern Europe and many others, it's enormous. Despite that, we hear complaints about healthcare not reaching all, healthcare not being as effective as it ought to be. So clearly we have to figure out our own model as we go, go forward. And therefore the leadership in India will lie not in replicating other models, but learning what has worked, what has not worked and creating an indigenized new model, which will allow us to leapfrog a few, few stages of development. And this is across the board. And I can see Mr. Amitabh Kant has joined us. He will be our next speaker. He's our, our chief guest for, for this uh, uh, conference today. And I have to thank him because he provides many of the qualities that I'm talking about. Somebody who's grown significantly from when he was a young bureaucrat in the state of Kerala to somebody who's led significant initiatives. Many of you would have heard of initiatives like Startup India, Stand Up India, like the, the Delhi-Mumbai Industrial Corridor. There are a, a large number of initiatives in which he has been involved. And he's also been part of the initiatives of making us as states, as countries, as policymakers accountable, putting measures. So ease of doing business, for example, was one of the measures that by which the World Bank used to look at how countries operate, what their desirability is from the investment point of view. So he, along with some of his colleagues, got the World Bank to do this for the first time across the states in India. So this is leadership. The leadership demonstrates the ability to think of new things which are going to be beneficial to community, society, and the system, getting a buy-in from the people who are the players in that area, and then getting them to do it. So, Leadership at this moment not only needs to calm people down because there is a significant amount of panic in sections of society, in parts of our economy, and within the overall system. There is also a lot of excitement because we're doing new things. But if you take a step back, anything that threatens human lives or the ability of systems to maintain quality of life for its people and population is a threat. So we have to push back and how we respond to this defines us as human beings because the reality of life is change is a reality. It will happen. And by the way, we do know not all change is good. It is how we respond to it that actually makes the big difference. Now, even if you look at the current situation, every country has faced this pandemic, but every country has faced it differently. The response has been different 
the timing has been different the amount of effort spent has been different monies and deployment of people have been different and therefore you can see the fallout is also different so there is a need for leaders to demonstrate that we have to do this with our feet on the ground thinking ahead planning for a future that we do not know today know about that is true leadership creating a vision and showing us that there is a future out there beyond the pandemic and therefore honing our skills in the areas which we have not even imagined to move us forward in the direction to be successful in the new normal which does not exist today and that in many ways defines true leadership that looks forward that has empathy for people that leads not just by telling people but by showing and doing things because it is also a fact that people lean much more on what you do rather than what you say and we do know that there are things we say verbally and then there is body language what our body language speaks is much louder than what our words say so it is important that our behavior reflects the kind of thinking that we expect of quality leaders leaders who operate with integrity and ethics leaders who do things with a passion leaders who are builders of institutions process systems and companies and that is the kind of leadership that we want to encourage is large numbers not just for india because we do need to build india's future but also for the world so i'm delighted that we have so many of the young people of bml munjal university logged on today listening to a variety of individuals who are leaders from different walks of life having demonstrated success across extreme adversity and good times and that is what is true leadership is to remain balanced but continue to move forward regardless of the situation good or not so good in fact adversity truly brings out the best in many and as has been often said that no good crisis should be allowed to go waste and this is a bigger crisis than we have seen in our lifetimes so it is important that we hone the skills that we had and by the way build new skills that were never required earlier some things as i said will go back but also there will be a requirement of of, of ours to move forward and carve out and write the new future for india and for indians so good wishes to all of you because you are in a place which is unique the bml munjal university has been designed not just as a university to learn from books but it's designed as a university to learn from life so life skills and life learnings are going to be an important part of your curriculum in the time that you spend at university and even though you're not on campus right now you're joining us virtually all of those initiatives have continued and we will continue to ensure that your faculty your professors your teachers are also your mentors they're also your tutors that they focus not just on what is written in your books but encourage you to think beyond that encourage you to focus and build better versions or the best versions of yourselves that you can so good luck and all the very best